now? How old are you now, General? How old are you now? God bless you, sir. We've been around, sir. We've been around uh, 10 o'clock, but I don't think the guy told you properly. Maybe it's mommy he told. We've set our camera downstairs. I said we should go and buy it in Toronto. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to our general. Happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, General. Happy birthday to you. How old are you now? How old are you now? How old are you now, General? You are not a boy, you are not a boy, so you have more than years. Thank you very so much. He's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. I so say all of us, I so say all of us, hooray! I so say all of us, hooray! For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. I so say all. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, and that is very good. Very good. It's your pride because I'm an old man, and I think. Uh, one of the best ways yes. to celebrate my birthday is to be quiet. Focus. And that's why, you know, mm. but you people have uh, brought a change to the world. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. Well. well, a very lovely, unique moment today, this morning. Very peculiar Friday morning in the city of Abuja, Federal Capital Territory of Nigeria. As we find ourselves in the ambience of one of the greatest men that has lived and is still living in this country, a man who is one of the contributors to the development of new Nigeria. He saw it all when he was very young. He has started government as young as the age of 27. He's been innovative right from his youth and he has contributed to national development in so many ways. And in almost all ramification. Strategically, it also appears, and as we found out, that today is his 78th birthday, born July 20th, 1940. A great man, a statesman, an intellectual, an icon, a thinker, a doer, a strategist, an innovative fellow. General David Medayeshi Jemi Bewon, CFR, MNI, FWC, the Jagmodo of Ibadanland. We found ourselves in this presence this morning and we are very privileged and honored to be in his ambience somewhere in Abuja. Sir, we want to greet you this morning and uh, want to appreciate the fact and the honor bestowed upon us to make us to find ourselves in your present. When we called yesterday, we, we've been around in Abuja for almost two weeks now and uh, we've been trying to reach to you, reach out to you, but your aid said you've been busy. I mean, after your, uh, the, the, the celebration of your daughter's wedding in, the, in, the, in England. Starting from the case of Nigeria, let's ask you, sir, how do you feel at 78? Being a member of the old school in Nigeria, when Nigeria was growing, being one of the builders of modern Nigeria, somebody who saw Nigeria at the lowest rung and who's also participated at the middle rung. And today we are where we are. How do you feel at 78 as a Nigerian, as an African, and as a leader? How do you feel, sir, to start with? It is a, a highly loaded question. And I'm sure within the space allowed, one has to be as brief as possible. 
Anyway, it depends on the angle you look at life. But uh, first, I have to give praise to the Almighty God for making me to be alive today. Not just being alive, being reasonably well and healthy. I use the word reasonably because uh, I'm not as strong as I used to be. And it should be as expected because uh, with the age now, but all the same, I'm able to move around, I'm able to talk, um, people can, uh, I'm audible, people can hear what I say, can understand what I say. Mm -hmm. I could also hear some people, although there are occasions that have uh, limitations to hearing or understanding everything said. Yeah. So, I give glory to God yeah. for His kindness. Mm. And also thanks to those who have also along the line have been of, su of support yes, uh, to live the life that I have lived. Mm. Um, I support. think generally looking, um, I've always been excited about my country, yeah. about my part of the country. But uh, uh, last month, when I was away for further uh, check on my health, okay, sir. I, I told my wife oh. that for the first time, I felt like not going back home. Can you imagine? That, is, uh, that was the UK, sir? Yes. Oh. I felt like not going back home. Oh. Uh, because Hmm. Why, I, why, why? I needed good health. Okay. I needed good environment yeah. for for me to continue to improve in my health. Hmm. And I I just felt. In any case, the point I want to make is that I made that statement to my wife. But, 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 uh, is it that because of the visitors around the country? Uh, the point the really is that. Uh, uh, the point really is that, you know, the environment. Where I was when I made that statement okay, was so that there was there was constant light, regular water, no anxiety of insecurity. You see all those things, and I knew by the time I got back, all those things would be would probably would exist. Hmm. Um, so anyway, I think I better stop there. Hmm. And hmm. what that conveys is that hmm. um, the country is making progress in uh. some areas, but if one would have hoped that in some other area that we are not making as much progress as we need to have made, uh, we would have gone beyond the situation in which we are. I mean, if uh, an elder statesman and uh, a man who has contributed to national development in solar education can exercise this fear, I mean, you go to a country whereby the system works, there's water, there's light, constant light, I mean, no taking of light for even one second. And the environment is very friendly, as you said, especially to your health. Then what do you, do you think the work of the whole past, people like General Jamie Benmo, has gone in vain? I mean, no, 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 it couldn't have gone in vain. Not necessarily the role I played, if ever I played any, any role. Mm. Um, I think... At, a, at each point, hopefully, or it would be right to say, people have made some progress, you know, in one way or the other. Whether those progress made were commensurable with the energy exerted or the expectation is a different thing. It's a different thing. But I think. Uh, Efforts made by previous leaders, I don't think they were efforts in vain. Mm. It's just that uh, we, we are not accelerating as we ought to accelerate. So what's the problem? I, I, you look at Nigeria now, you look at the project, and someone like you who started ruling at the age of 27, you are a millard at a very young age, and you've done a whole lot of development, and you are so innovative in your days, uh, to the extent that people will always say, you know, Jem Benwon is a very different name. When the name Jem Benwon is mentioned anywhere, you remember development in the old western region, you remember development in Oyo State, you remember development in even in the police security sector. So, how do you feel when you look at Nigeria now? And you look at the whole 
you are hearing about kidnapping, about hard men killing, about poor education, about especially near 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 no health situation where there's no good health, people have to travel abroad to get good medical care. How do you feel as one of those who started these good measures, who built the country, one of the fathers of Nigeria? Well, like I said, I don't feel too happy. Hmm. I feel fairly disappointed because where some of us thought we should be now is not where we are. And certain things you read or you hear of, you start to wonder whether those stories you hear are, are actually happen in Nigeria. So then also, uh, some of us who have, through God's giving chance or chances, were at one point or the other involved in governance. Yeah, of course. Uh, what the effort we put in at the time we were there, and what we see being done today, it seems we've wasted our time. Oh. But let us hope and pray that we have not wasted our time. But certainly, it appears you wasted the, your time. The, the progress we thought should have been made. Oh. We can't, there is no evidence that we continued on the same level of acceleration. Oh. Oh. And, uh, but, I, but I want to believe that maybe it's only minute, but Maybe pr progress have been made in some other areas, hmm. but uh, we could have done better. Hmm. For example, I just give you as an example some that um, <clears throat> you want to travel by train. Yes, sir. Of course. See, in Britain or in America. Yes, sir. Now, if you have attained a certain age hmm. in life. They will consider you a senior citizen. Hmm. And you have a, a percentage discount. Hmm. And the fares, the transport fare? Yes, hmm. a percentage discount. If you have, if you, if you are charged for some services, you can be given discount. Hmm. You can also get advice from some institutions by virtue of who you are. These are things we are not saying we should be on the same pedestal, but let us see some signs that we are moving towards that situation. But, but in Nigeria, you have elder citizens even collapsing on the, the queue when they are queuing to receive their pension. We, have, we hear a lot of stories of senior citizens just falling and dying. So how do you commensurate that with some of these countries you just mentioned, UK, London, uh, no, I mean UK, America, whereby they, you know, I mean, how, how do you go? Most of you go there, but when you come back, it's an irony that things you see there, good things of life, cannot be implemented there. Do you think this country is changed? Um, number one, there is no way we will attain the level they have attained within a brief short period. Also, a lot of efforts have gone into it hmm. by people before them. Okay, sir. It, it, it's like building a house. If you start with the clearing, yes, next you know you excavate, second you now put blocks and do your DPC. Let us say you didn't go beyond DPC, you leave. Somebody comes, puts one or two blocks yes, on top of the DPC, you are already developing. And by the time you come back, probably in two months or, or two years, you find the structure has moved from the ground. Yep. So, 
people before those there and now yes, sir. have built a foundation just like our earlier leaders. A lot of them had made great effort. Like, uh, the, the period of Zeke, the period of Abula, Sadano Sokoto, and many others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the foundation they lay. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If subsequent governments just added a little bit, we, we will have moved from the position we are today. Hmm. Um, when I was a very young man, I, I knew Nigeria Railway. Yes, sir. Of course. Even Nigeria Port Authority. I knew, I mean, uh, on the few years ago, Nigeria Airways. I know government is making effort now to re-establish mm -hmm. Nigeria Airways, or do they call it Nigeria Air? Uh, yeah, it was launched in London. Too. There was uh, 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 Nigeria, uh, I mean, shipping line. Oh yeah, and so on. Yeah, this. But today, line, to bring people from it, 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 instead of further developing these establishments, they have vanished. They have disappeared. <laughs> Um, so, it's, it's, it's baffling. A lot of people believe that we were not matured enough when the white men gave us power. No, sir, I'm telling you, because the, 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 the colonial master came. And if you look at the situation in South Africa, and you saw the kind of industry that that country was able to build with the colonial master in town. Uh, in, in town. But you look at the xenophobia going on now. So, a lot of people felt that there was not too matured to start running government, when the Kulai Maza handed over to us governors. Do you share this perception, sir? No, I, do, not I, I don't do. I don't. Why, sir? Who, who, who is mature? Okay. Except we are dealing by age. Other than the age of individual, mm. uh, when we say a chap is an adolescent, okay, sir. a chap is uh, a, a young person, a chap is, uh, a, you know, of certain age, so, Mm. I, 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 don't, I don't buy that for a nation. You don't buy that? And I don't so buy you, that you for a are, nation. You are, we are prepared because you look at even some of the amalgamation, the amalgamation, the, 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 the independent in the north was something, I think 1957, there was a kind of a, a kind of difference in opinion from the northern leaders and those of the southern leaders, the Aulu was what? Any for, any for independence and the southerners of Zulu were saying, no, we are not ready. And uh, I think Loluga forcefully married those two regions together for economic reason. That's the belief and that's the perception. Don't yeah, you? anyway, I, I don't want to go into, into those because into those. Okay. It, it will be difficult to convince me, okay, sir. but it doesn't mean the theory being put forward is wrong, no. Okay, but sir. I'm just not convinced in the sense that you get to a certain stage where you should know what is good and what is, and what is not good. good. Okay? Uh, there are some... Uh, there are people who unlucky, who are unlucky, mm. they get involved in certain group. And at a certain time, they probably, you know, sit down, start thinking that, am I, should I really be following this group? <laughs> and then, it of some of them may be able to think rightly and start to disassociate on a gradual basis mm. from such a group. While some will even still be aspiring to get involved <laughs> with that group. So, uh, I think this is our independence. Uh, we, we ought to have been able to manage our affairs that uh, we should gradually forget about the colonial days and so on, yes. whether we got independence on platter of gold or not. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I, I, I don't, I don't buy that theory. Hmm. I don't buy that theory. But because you see, there are, there are some countries that got independence the, time, the same time we got independence. Okay, sir. There are those who got independence after us, and they seem to have done things differently to achieve a better result than we have done. Mm. So I, I don't buy it. I want to ask you this question. And because you are also in that case, you are you're part of the military class. I mean, even if you pretend to be a civilian now, but 
Eugene is a military man. Do you agree that the military messed up? They, that a lot of people believe that it was the incursion of the military that brought a lot of whatever. It was after the incursion of the military that the country started generating that the early uh, 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 what they call the managers of this country, the political class in the early 60s were ready that if we have allowed the democracy to just go that way, despite the uh, uh, what can I call the idiosyncrasies of that democracy, that it could have been better, that it was the military that messed up, that cut off that process, and after the incursion, then the balance couldn't hold again. Do you agree that it's your class, the military class, your sector that messed up the Quality and mess of the progression of Nigeria? I may not necessarily agree. Um, many factors might have been responsible. Yeah. Military may be one of such factors. Uh, but to solely hold military responsible for it, in my judgment, <laughs> may not be right. So, what are the fa other factors? Uh, first, why did the military strike? I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it was right. But why did they strike? Sometimes certain things will happen, and we can say that what has happened had been made possible by some people acting irresponsibly. In other words, we have what we call vicarious liability in a situation where somebody can be held liable for a situation. Now you have a houseboy who, you know, just merely survives, then you carelessly place thousands of nara on your center table and, you know, you go out. Now, you should know that you have enticed this houseboy into you know, either taking the money. Yep. Or, or ignoring. Or doing something with it anyway. So you are vicariously liable to the disappearance. In any case, you have contributed to that boy. <laughs> stealing the money. Huh? Or taking the money without authority. So this is why I say, um, I, I can't completely, 100% agree with her. Hmm. But... The military, um, something, some, some, some actions might have prompted those in the military to have done what they did. Though what they did is not justified, but you have created the situation. This is what I'm saying. Okay, sir. That yes, that theory may be right. But it's to some extent. Situations must have brought it about. Mm. So, in, in analyzing what actually must have brought it about, we need to widen our net in trying to find ground for such action. Mm. I don't know whether it makes sense, but that's the way I look at it. It makes sense already, right, but uh, a lot of other analysts we know that agree with you. But let's look at it. Um, growing up, what were the kind of Nigeria you saw? I mean, growing up as a young boy or a young chap in Yagbe Day in Kogi State, what were the aspirations and uh, what was life really like in those days? I mean, and uh, when you look at it nostalgically now, what? Did you aspire to be? And uh, you're joining the military. Was it an accident or a deliberate effort? I, I think my joining the military was a deliberate effort because I've developed to know what is good from what is bad. Mm. Um, first, I like the way military people dress. Their smartness, uh, and I, I like adventurous life. Uh -huh. I don't like a sedentary occupation okay. where you just sit down. So it, it was not an accident at all. 
Mm -hmm. And after leaving school, I had opportunity. Uh, I was given appointment in Kelly Ministry Department. I want to be able of the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. in Kaduna. I also worked briefly in survey school. And then finally, Ministry of Health, because I was trying to train as a radiographer. I went to school of radiography in Lagos. Okay. And by the time I finished, I had to go back to Cardona to report. And Cardona now I was transferred to Kano. Hmm. I worked in City Hospital, Dala Orthopedic Hospital, and Nasarawa Hospital. Well, I was transferred to, to Lokoja to establish X-ray department at the hospital in Lokoja. I was the one who established the X-ray department. X-ray hmm. department? X-ray department in Lokoja. You established it, sir? Yes. Hmm. There was only one doctor at that time, a white man. Hmm. Okay. So, that's, that's um, it was from Lokoja, I now took the exam to become a cadet. Of course, I've taken the exam twice earlier okay. and didn't make it. <laughs> so so you are uh, it was something I went in for, uh, not by accident. Why did you join Navy or Air Force? Why Army? Oh, yes, Army. You may as well ask somebody, why didn't you join the three? You have to make a choice. You have a choice. I know that I was trying from one to the other, I was consistent, it was the army I wanted. Mm. Yes. Mm. But uh, why are you not afraid that you could lose your head? I mean, you lose what? Lose your head joining the army because they but, could send you to the war front, they could send you to. But places, if people you know, who don't join the army, don't, they lose, don't some of them lose their head? <laughs> the right side. Okay. Why, why did you come here this morning? Yeah. Why did you come here? To interview you, sir. Uh, to talk to you. Is it not possible you could have an accident anyway? Yeah. Life is. Life is full of risks, mm. and if you think more of the risk, then you will do nothing. Mm. And in any case, as young people, what makes an elderly man get scared? Don't scare young people. Mm. You should not scare young people. Okay, what well, they shouldn't. They, okay. they don't scare young people because as a young man. You are looking into the future. But as you get older, you start reflecting. And you get frightened by certain situations and so on. But what, what was the role of your parents? Did they support you or they were against you? No, I, 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 I didn't. I left my parents out of it because, um, I, mean, I, I, I mean, the essence of their sending me to school is that they were already throwing me to the wall. <laughs> for me to find my way and I exactly that's what I did. So I, I didn't discuss it with my parents. Even I, I've been to England, came back, became an officer before I told my parents uh, what I do. That's, that's, that's a courage, that's a very, that's a very strong one. I mean uh, your mom, your dad, yes. uh, why you, is it out of the fear that they might discourage or no, 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 be afraid? No, no, it was just the I mean okay. I just did it. What am I telling? What, what? What was I to tell them for? Mm. For, the, for me to wait that they see yes, go ahead or don't go ahead? Mm. <laughs> All they needed to do for me is to pray for me. And I think they did that. So who was the father and your mom? Because I'm very aware of your mom who were at Tiberia two years ago or three yes. years ago. And it was so huge. The old village in Yagwe, they were talking about how she was a good woman, she has raised a lot of life. People were talking about how they were coming to the house to eat her rice for free. Eat a meat, eat a food. I mean, for free and all that. But who was your father? Who was your mother? And how did the both of them influence you? I mean, your dad and your mom. Um, I mean, I don't know how best I can put answer that to your question. Uh, I think what I can say, I copied from them. Okay. Is uh, work hard. And be honest. Mm. 
I can say they probably I can say they influence me in this two areas. In hard work. The hard work mm. and honesty. honesty. Um, and th those were my principles throughout my military career and up to it now. Mm. Yes. Can you can you recall some of your near death situation? I mean, in your 23 years of uh, military career, can you remember some very challenging moment near death as a military officer, and how did that also uh, uh, how, how did that help you? Courage about life. How did that affect you psychologically? Can you recall near death experiences? Of course, there were mm. during this civil war. Mm. Uh, it was a daily thing. Uh, you were in the front of the war. Of course, and you were in the war front. Okay. Your and uh, <coughs> when you, when when you are in war situation, mm -hmm. particularly if you are in the front, death could come any time. Mm. So, but you pray, and I think the best thing would be to just face life normally. If you start thinking of uh, death, 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 then you are almost already dead, even though you, you are living. <sighs> So, I must be honest, there were times when one was afraid or had anxiety. Oh, excuse me, this is what it's called. Thank you very much. How are you? Thank you, thank you. Hi, Sam. Thank you very much. That's okay, that's okay. In music? Eh, hey, I didn't know that. I see. Actually, I should, I should have been at the year, but your mom says, insists I should be here for my birthday. I say, okay. So I'll be going to here tomorrow. Be, be. You said what? That's okay. Yes. So, so how are you? You at home or what? Okay. I see. I see. That's okay. You, you. Eh, nothing. I just stay at home. I, I'm, not, I'm just uh, the depressed men are just uh, interviewing me now. Um, All right, take care. All right, all right, all right. I love you too. Take care and have a nice day. Love you too. Bye. Bye. You are talking about near-death experience. We're going to run up now. Um, so how are you able to... I mean, there's a particular when you lost an officer, and I think that was very... Most of the time when you talk about it, it moves you to tears, you know? So what really yeah, happened? But I'm, I'm getting over it. Getting over it. So, so, so what happened that day? I mean, because I interviewed General yeah. Moment too, and it said something similar like that, that somebody was beside him, was waking, and the person was gone, that the bullet entered through his car mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, so many things, so many things happened. Um, it's just like, I know at a, a place called, I mean, when my battalion was, was in the front, uh, leading the the sector in which a leader, General Bisoye, was the sector commander, mm. and my battalion was the most forward battalion. Uh, and Abisoye came to say hello to us, and um, he decided to go as far as the front 
the front line and um, I didn't go with him because we were doing something at my headquarters but uh, one of my soldiers that actually followed him I think they were just talking bullet just came yes, and, uh, so it could be anybody Bullet has no eyes, so <laughs> they fire it somewhere. You don't know where the man who fires it is, and so on. So um, nobody wants to die, but you should assume that it could be anybody. In, could be, in the worst situation? Yeah, it could, it could be anybody. I also remember there was a time my battalion, being a fairly young battalion, uh, not much experience, and the battalion where you should have 27 officers, yep. when it's well established, we had only three officers. Hmm. So what can you do? Uh, and I know that in war, cooperation is very important. Hmm. And so in my sector, there was a great cooperation. I want to say, for example, uh, my battalion being very young, we were told to to move, the present head of state was commanding, the battalion he was commanding, he made sure he himself, plus some of his officers, gave support to my battalion. That's the one boy. That's interesting. <laughs> so, um, and this is one of those things really, this cooperation among officers that cement our relationship that many civilians sometimes would say we, 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 that uh, we behave as uh, if we are, uh, what do they call it, people who belong to us. Like cops? Yeah, that cops. We, be, we, we are like cops. Yes. The point it really is this, when you have acted together, believe in yourselves, trust yourself, then, and of course, because of your belief, Mm. Wherever you are, yes, sir. you have that belief that your colleague who is at the other side, even though you don't see him, mm. is acting right. Unlike politicians. I understand. You understand? That's so you, you is acting right. So on the basis of that, you could you could swear that this man, this is what he's doing at this time, even though you don't see him. I'm not saying that I'm there are no such occasions when once in a while you can be disappointed, but it's very minute. In the military? In the military. It's very minute. It and that's why I think in maybe I must have said something somewhere recently that once a decision is taken, everybody knows his role. And the commander or the leader where, you know, does not need to go back to remind you or to ask you what you are doing. Almost at any time, at that night or day, he knows what you are doing. Once another has been given, everybody understands his role, you don't need to be reminded. Hmm. And th this is what we don't, uh, based on your initial question, yes. in this country, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Are, are you going to say that you, you, eh, you tell somebody, this this establishment is put in place to perform this job, but they don't perform it. Then, of course, I'm aware that also sometimes yes, sir. a handicap is created by lack of finance. Hmm. Because if you give man a job to do, yes, you must give him the means what to execute the job. Means. If you tell a man to go to Lagos and he should be back tomorrow, but you don't give him money for transport, either by air, by train, if train does exist, or by road, how do you expect him to get there? So, anyway, I'm not sure if those things answer your question. Actually, it's not my question, but um, uh, from what you just said now, is there a difference? You played politics in 2003, and you saw the way you were disappointed in Kogi West and all that, all the things the politicians did. Is there a difference between the political class and the military class, okay, is, 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 what's the difference between the chemistry? Today now you see people, they're in APC, tomorrow they jump back oh, to PDP, oh, oh. then yeah. the next tomorrow they're talking about ARAPC, then next tomorrow they might be talking about NP, 
uh, PPU or CPPU or something like that. So in, in your own days, the, the military class, and is there a difference between the politician and the military politicians? I don't know. Maybe by the time I finish attempting to answer your question, you, you can put, put them together. Yes, sir. In fact, one of the questions you asked much earlier, when I said, at a certain time, I told my wife that going home was not terribly attractive. These were some of the reasons. How on earth can a responsible person and a person who is intelligent, who puts himself forward as a leader, saying that he can correct the ease in society, how can he now be changing like a ping pong ball from party to party? I, I don't understand. Honestly, I don't understand. I, I, I'm not opposed to the fact that if you join a party, and the party says, these are manifesto, these are program. If the party now deviates from those, and you now feel that, look, this will not work, what I joined the party for, and you decide to change, to leave the party, honestly, I think you have good grounds. But by the time you change, it, it, you know, to now, Make a U-turn, or if I go to another third party, you are becoming a ruling stone that gathers no more. Uh, you understand? Uh, and so, when you read all these hmm. every day happening in our country, the question is, where really can we settle now? <laughs> are these people actually getting involved for the good of society? or for their own personal benefit. Hmm. You can't be changing every day. Even in marriage, it's not every day the wife is happy or the husband is happy. Do you, because of that, change tomorrow, just walk out of your hus uh, for the house from your husband for another new man? Or are you walking out of your wife for another new woman? No, sir. You must find a way where you, you could establish a line of communication. You could even come to a point to say, look, people will laugh at us. Let us see what we can do to bring some understanding. Or you may even say, oh, because of our children. Com let, 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 us, let us find a way to communicate. Compromise. You compromise and so on. Huh. So, it is very worrying, sir. Yeah, the, the politician and the military, because in your own days, okay, you, you, okay. Just, you just talk about you, you command don't. and structure in the military era. But now, the, the leader of APC says something, and the, the moral... The, the so, day. there is no basis for... In Nigeria, yes, sir. there is no basis for comparing the military and the politician. And, 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 uh, and I want to believe... He, he mil of course, I don't know, I don't want to talk too much about the military. Okay. Uh, I can only talk about the military in relation to when I was there. Oh, I yes. wouldn't know what is happening now mm. because uh, the society is an institution that could influence situations very much. But um, during my time, uh, three things officers were taught not to discuss in the mess. Um, they happened to be What we call, I mean, money, women, and politics. Okay, that was the training. Yes. You don't discuss money, women, and politics. In yes. The mess. So what do you discuss in the mess? Eh? What do you discuss in the mess? You don't discuss in the mess. mess? Yes, sir. You discuss the military. You strategy and strategy. The, exactly. You discuss the military. Hmm. And that's why even then, in the army, in those days, I don't know now. Um, you are discouraged for getting married until you are 25. Hmm. Okay? Yeah. You are discouraged from getting married until 25. Until, until 25. Why? Hey, I'm coming because you ask questions. 
And even when you want to get married, you must take the permission of your commanding officer to get married. Okay? Um, <clears throat> now, one of the reasons is that yeah. when you leave the NDA and you go to your new unit, you are deemed at that level because you are not married, you are deemed to be married to the army. And so, nothing should bother you if you are called at 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m., 3 a.m. to go to anywhere. Because you have no wife, of course, naturally you have no child, you don't need to think of anything. Because the army is the institution to which you are married. But of course, don't forget that when they advertise for cadets to vote for position in India, they say minimum, or oh, you shouldn't be older than eight, 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 eighteen years. Seventeen, eighteen, eighteen. Years, and then, yeah. because you spent three years in India, three plus eighteen. That's twenty-one. So if you are commissioned at twenty-one years of age. By the time you become 25, you should be getting, you should have been a lieutenant. The bright one will be getting to captain. So, don't forget, NDA passes out officers every year. So you're already having two or three layers behind you. So you have already advanced to some level. So, you're being called you are being referred to as marrying the army. There are people behind you who are now married to them. So you have attained some seniority. So you can be given responsibility now. And of course, if you get married at that time, nobody will be calling you at 1 p.m., I mean 1 a.m., 1.30 a.m., like when you are just coming out of the end. That is the system. You understand? Okay? And the reason you are taking permission really is this. Sometimes they want to give you a task. They consider your family. But if you get married and you don't tell your commanding officer, he doesn't know you are married or not married. Or he doesn't know that you are married. So there are certain tasks they want to give you. They consider your family. Because they know if you are not happy, if your family is not happy, you can't be happy at your job. Understand. The happiness in your home should reflect in the happiness in your office. Understand. That's one aspect. Second aspect is that now married quarters are limited. If there is no married quarters and you get married, where do you live with your wife? The army does not allow newly married officers to go and start looking for rental houses. Hmm. And that is why you have barracks for soldiers, barracks for officers. This, um, this is it. And um, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, no, 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 no. You look at the army of today. You are adjutant general of the army in your days. And I, 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 I'm aware you brought a lot of innovative to the army through your role. But if you look at the army of today, there's this belief that most of the army, the positions they attain today is political. They don't allow them to run their course uh, before they come captain. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of things you have to do. But today now, people believe that it's based on your religion or your ethnicity. No, 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 no. I, 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 I will, no, you I, are the army of your day. I'm saying the army of your day was even, different. Even the, even the army of today, I'm not sure it's as bad as you are painting it. Okay, sir. Do me a favor, report it the way I do. I don't think it's as bad. I don't know much anymore, but I'm sure okay. there's still some level of sanity when compared to other professions. Oh. I still believe so. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily subscribe to what you are saying. Okay. It's just that standard might have fallen, but there's still some level of standard.